Ice box. I grew up in a factory town, but there was still enough nature around for us to go exploring in the woods. When we were done exploring all the abandoned factories. Hey, we were into urbex when urbex wasn't cool. One day, when I was in my teens, a bunch of us went hiking in an unfamiliar section of the local woods. We spent a lot of time hanging out there, but we usually headed towards the river, away from this part, which was towards the train tracks. One thing we noticed right away was all the garbage. Now, our, our local woods weren't exactly pristine, but this section was a garbage dump. There were piles of bottles and cans, empty cigarette packs, rags and scattered documents, dirty clothes, even a mattress, and an old refrigerator. An old battered refrigerator. Must be where they keep their beer, I said, which got a laugh. Not much, but a little. Now, back then, there was a lot of stuff in the media advising people to properly dispose of refrigerators and not dump them in places where children could access them. As a result, there were lots of horror stories, some of them no doubt true, about kids who'd crawled into derelict fridges only to get trapped and suffocated. Asphyxiated. So, when some guy said, You think there's a kid in there? It got a bigger laugh than my joke, so I said, Let's find out, and pulled the door open. <sighs> This part is hard to write. There wasn't a kid in there. There was a man, an adult, dirty, emaciated, little more than a skeleton, with huge staring eyes and a wide open mouth. And he was screaming, shrieking. I slammed the door, but not before we all saw that he was bound with ropes and chains. We ran, and could still hear the man's screams, now muffled by the closed door, but also drowned out by our own bawling and hysterical crying. But it gets worse, if it could get worse. It gets worse. We didn't tell anyone. We didn't tell anyone about it. None of us did, as if by an unspoken agreement. Don't ask me why. Maybe we were afraid of getting in trouble for hanging out in the woods. Or, or maybe we thought it was a mafia organized crime thing and that they might come after us if we told. Whatever the reason, we made an unconscious decision to forget about it and just avoid that section of the woods. We never went back, and we never talked about it, not even amongst ourselves. Still, as I got older, I found, naturally, the incident haunted me. Did we just leave a man to die? And that's when I made the worst mistake in my life. Last year, I visited the old hometown for the first time in 20 years and return to that unfamiliar section of the woods. The first thing I noticed this time was that the woods had been gentrified with hiking trails, benches, signage, etc. No garbage either. I thought there was no way there could be an abandoned icebox around here. <laughs> and I began to hope, to pray, that, that maybe the whole thing had just been a figment of my imagination a nightmare that had never really happened. But as I continued to explore, my surroundings grew wilder, the underbrush thicker. Everything went silent. And then suddenly, 
It was right in front of me. The refrigerator. Or at least a refrigerator. It seemed more decrepit as it would be if it had stood there for twenty summers and winters. But was it the same refrigerator? No. No, it, it couldn't be. But there was only one way to find out. Open it. And so I did, and screamed! Screamed, but I, I didn't scream alone. There was a man in there, and he looked identical to the man from twenty years before. Dirty, emaciated, little more than a skeleton, with huge staring eyes and a wide open mouth, and he was screaming, shrieking. So I helped him, right? I, I got the poor guy out of there, right? Nope, 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 nope. No, I ran and, and kept running and kept what I saw to myself. I know it was wrong, but I can't properly explain it. But I just had to get away. But you can't get away, can you? You can't get away. Who was the screaming man? I don't know. Was he a kidnapping victim or, or something, something paranormal? Uh, I don't know. But my bet is on the paranormal. But when I got home, I kept dreaming about it. I would find myself walking in slow motion through the woods, and then I find the ice box, and I don't want to open it. I don't want to open it, but I have to open it. I must open it, and in slow motion, I reach for the handle, and... And I wake up screaming. But lately, the dream has changed. Now I find myself in darkness, unable to move, and I know that I am the one chained inside the ice box, waiting for someone to open the door. Sometimes it's opened by my old friends, and sometimes by the screaming man. But sometimes, no one comes, and I'm left in darkness, getting more and more agitated, until I wake up in my own bed, safe again. But tonight, I woke up, and instead of the familiar outlines of the bed, visible in the pale light coming through the bedroom curtains, there was nothing but darkness, total darkness, blackness, blackness, Stygian blackness. Wake up! Wake up! I screamed. But I didn't wake up. Just crouched there in total darkness. For I was trapped in the total darkness inside the icebox for eternity. And that's when my screaming really started. The moral of the story? Keep sleeping refrigerators shut. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Warren, and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories featuring such cryptids as the Night Floaters, werewolves, and the black-eyed children. So again, please consider subscribing. Please help me to reach my goal of 2,500 subs. Till midnight, cheers! Pictures used in today's video, courtesy of Pix here, while the black screen is supposed to replicate the interior of the icebox. The music was The Dreadful, The Dread, by that patron of the internet, Kevin McLeod. And remember, it's always best 
to stay out of the fridge. <laughs>